How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Join me for my haul, my latest haul of manga. We have some box sets, uh, some stuff that I've been looking for for years, and then some stuff that wraps up some series I've been collecting. So, let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back everybody. So today I have a haul for the month of April of 2023. As I mentioned in the intro, it has been a little bit since I've done a manga haul video. I think it was in 2022 sometime. Surely, yeah, I haven't done one this year. Uh, so these are some of the books that I just did not pick up in April, uh, but I picked up, I guess, for the last half a year or so. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at some of these books. Let's start with the Fist of the North Star. Here is the latest volume. This is volume eight. I believe volume nine comes out sometime in the summer of Tatsuro Hara and Buronson's Fist of the North Star. It's still from the very beginning. We get these thick glossy pages right here for the table of contents. And we have some semi-colored pages. There's the dude right there, Rao the Conqueror, and Kenshiro, still duking it out. It looks like there's a lot more of those red tone pages throughout this volume right here. Now, this, I don't think, made it this far when they originally published the book. But I, I do believe that the other, what was it, the, the other publisher ended up wrapping up this series, the One Comics Publishing. Uh, they ended up wrapping this up, and they, they also gave us the Fist of the Blue Heavens. And a couple of other of the spin-off series of Fist of the North Star. So hopefully these sold well enough. Because I think this is just pretty much what they ended up getting in Japan. Japan. These hardcovers. And that's what Viz is bringing over here. But I hope that they take a note of how well these are selling. So we can get some of the spin-offs of the, uh, the preludes. And other stories set in the world of Fist of the North Star. Such a badass. But that is volume eight. As soon as I got this book, I put it immediately in my to-read pile. It does come with French flaps. So it's a very nice edition. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Maison Koku collections. And this one is $19.99. It is in soft cover format. Well, soft, but I guess hard cover. I'm sure there's a word for that. But this is Mermaid Scales and the Town of Sand, all by Yoko Komori. And I fell in love with that cover. I had no idea what this was about going in. And it's it's in my to-read pile. I think it's like number five or six sometime. I'll be getting to it this week. And I can't wait to read it. Just fell in love with that cover. The art, I will say, on the inside looks a little different than what I was expecting out here from the outside. Uh, this looks more Studio Ghibli-ish. This looks more... A, a little cartoony. And one thing I just noticed right away is the paper stock they're using for this one. Even though it feels like thick paper stock, there's bleed through going on. Oh my gosh, the bleed through, which happens in manga a lot. But that is Mermaid Scales and the Town of Sand. Shaman King, Omnibus, Volume. What volume is this? Oh, 30 divided by 3. Volume 10! That's where we are. So usually with these three and one, speaking of paper stock, this is where they usually use their cheapest paper uh, to make this book. I believe this is $19.99. Yeah, $19.99 for three Tonka Bonds. So you're pretty much paying for the price of two. But in order to do that, they don't put any of the covers or the covers are just in black and white. They don't add any color pages. It's kind of like your Dragon Ball three and ones. And the paper stock is the cheapest paper stock in manga very see-through pages i know one piece has the same issue and people complain about that but honestly for the price though you get what you pay for these aren't limited edition hard covers they're not deluxe edition so the paper stock seems to be uh the same paper stock that they've been using for years for these three and ones and honestly i'm okay with that if ever they make a shaman king hardcover I'll, i'm stupid enough to upgrade but we're at volume 30 and there's a there's a spin-off that's coming out this um, in May of Shaman King 2, or I guess the latest series. Now, you may have seen my overview of The Girl from the Other Side, uh, Volume 1. I fell in love with that book. I love, uh, it made it into my top 10 uh, 
collected edition releases of was it 2021 when the first volume came out now we need one more volume to wrap up the series this is oh my gosh these are beautiful absolutely stunning books from seven seas i love the gold right here just it, they're still doing it and every volume and every volume has a different item on the back and i of course i always keep these leaflets because i'm weird like that uh they're beautiful books and again the paper stock in here is so awesome at absorbing all the blacks it reminds me of the paper stock they used in berserk in the deluxe editions of berserk just some high quality paper without going into the glossy stock now yeah on my channel if you do watch me on a daily weekly basis whatever it is i do talk about you know the misconception of paper stock like glossy paper seems to be top tier for a lot of people but really it depends on the artwork if it's black and white paper stock like this is freaking awesome and really helps out the art just pop but i don't think this would benefit from something like um glossy paper stock but this is volumes two and three and we need just one more volume to wrap up this series and i picked up black lagoon because i was missing volume six and this decided to just reprint it recently so i don't know as of this video if it's come back to if it's still in print or not these sometimes these volume numbers they don't tell you ahead of time what's coming back to print sometimes you just got to put them in your wish list so i know that cheap graphic novels has a wish list and they'll email you as soon as a book can be ordered for you so this is volume 12 this is the latest volume and i'm so glad they reprinted this one because oh my gosh it was going for stupid amounts of money now i need volume five which i think just came back to stock too so you may be seeing that in the next manga haul video but these are volumes six and twelve and this is part of the viz signature series so they're a little bit bigger than the standard tonkabon i swear it is like maybe once twice a year that we get an osama tasuka manga that has not been previously released in america but this is bomba uh this is published by kadansha not vertical so this is one of those books uh that he worked on and it's one that i've not read and it came out a couple of months ago towards the beginning of the year and i was really surprised to see it come out and not a big deal about it right like there wasn't a big hoorah to me tasuka is just one of those creators that no matter what i have to get the english version i learned my lesson with phoenix i was so stupid i didn't buy the phoenix volumes um when they were coming out i thought oh let's just wait till the whole set comes out surely they'll release a a what's it called a box set or hardcover editions of this because it's osama tezuka and they never did so when i had the chance to buy some like i couldn't find volume four and i couldn't find volume seven or something like that and i thought oh they'll reprint those i'll just get them all when they're reprinted and that never happened so now anytime a book by tezuka the god of manga comes out i don't care if i don't get to read it for another year or so i gotta pick it up as soon as it's available uh this is one of the smaller ones though and this one retails for 14 dollars 95 cents it's a it's a thin slim book and here's other books actually ayaka was just reprinted mw and doro doro from one master of manga to another here is hayao miyazaki's shuna's journey a book that i have been waiting years to read it is finally out and this is a nice beautiful hardcover format from first second so very well done first second for bringing this out to america in english so it does have a dust jacket and here is your table of contents with beautiful watercolors oh my gosh it's just so stunning and of course that feel of nausicaa valley of the wind but this is the type of artwork you're going to be seeing in here. The type of colors in the entire book is in color. And for the first time, available in just beautiful hardcover format and in English format. So I love that this is out. I don't think it tells you exactly what it's rated. But I think this is one that's like kind of like the Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. It's, it's rated teen. There's a blur back here from Guillermo del Toro and Daisy Ridley. A story that is at once eternal and fresh and a rare gem from a beloved master storytelling. Look at Daisy getting a blurb up there on a first second book. Beautiful, beautiful book. Marmalade Boy, the collector's edition. Now this is a soft cover before we get too crazy. They didn't decide to make it a hard cover, but I'm just glad they're bringing out this old property. I just did a 
TikTok, I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. <laughs> but talking about the license of uh, Kimagori Orange Road being lost. So that means they can't reprint it. That once the stock is gone, it's gone. So old books like this being reprinted by another publisher. I believe uh, Tokyo Pop brought it out to America at first. So this is volume one, collecting both. Um, it's your harem type of story. The guy falls in love with, I think it's his step sister's friend or something like that it's been years since i've read this um matter of fact when i bought the tokyo pop version so all the color pages are in here i wanted to go back and reread it and for some reason i didn't but it brings back a lot of memories i i'll be honest i didn't read this at first i watched it first we had like bootleg copies of it back in like 1997 yeah around that era 1996 1997 around that era when i was going to conventions and just picking up all the bootleg manga or anime that was available and this just happened to be one of them so there should be i believe a total of four of these volumes coming out, uh, coming out to collect the whole series but that is marmalade boy and it is seven c's that's publishing this one wrapping up urse atsura is volume 17 here we ho. Ho. <laughs> Can't even talk pretty one day. Uh, here we go with the latest Urusei Atsura. Um, now, I'm not going to show much of this because if you've been watching my channel for a while, not Rumiko Takahashi herself, but the publishing company in Japan, even though the books were sent to me by Viz, made a big hoorah about it and pulled my videos down with a copyright strike. What the hell? I had it approved by Viz is the one that sent me the books. But anyway, this is the final volume. Maybe one day I'll talk about this book without any walking on eggshells, if you will. But I love this series. I'm so glad for the first time it's been collected in whole in America. I hope that we get a hardcover treatment of Ranma one day. That, that's one of my favorite series. Or uh, Also, the Mermaid Saga. I would love to see that. Maze on a Coco, of course, would be my favorite. Uh, but also the Rumik trilogy or the Rumik theater. That stuff needs to be reprinted in some kind of hardcover format but this is volume 17 $19.99 and that is Urusei Atsura the final volume now on my channel I have done overviews of the Parasite books are beautiful reprints of the Parasite manga but all in color and I did a comparison to the uh, well I guess the previous uh, version of this that was printed by Del Rey not the Tokyo Pop version but these are beautiful books. If you want to see that, click on the link above. That takes you directly to the video. Lupin the Third. This was such a kind gift uh, for my birthday for, from one of my viewers. I didn't have this one. I have some of the Tokyo Pop stuff. I didn't have the second series. But what this is, is the greatest hits. So this is basically a collection of different stories throughout the years of Monkey Punches, Lupin the Third. Uh, this one does have a mature rating, or no, teen, 13 plus. I thought it was mature rating because of the nudity and a um, little bit of the naughty bits in there. But I guess maybe not. But it, it's uh, done all in the right to left format, kind of like the way that Tokyo Pop first released the Lupin books. I really hope one day we have a big Lupin library because this is stuff that I've not read in whole. Like, there's so much that is missing from Lupin, uh, the manga that has never been collected here in America. So I'm hoping one day either Kadansha or Seven Seas publishes these. And this is a nice hardcover. So I hope they continue these. Um, I don't see where it says a volume number though. It just says greatest hits. So maybe this is just taking some of the best stories and putting them to print in this nice hardcover edition. This is Killing Stalking volume one. This is also published by Seven Seas. I this is by Kugi, and this is a manhwa. So this one here, I believe, is all in color. Yes, it is all in color. And gets a lot of praise online for how dark and sadistic it gets. So I don't want to flip too much through here, but I do want to read it. Because I've heard some of my viewers tell me that this one is dark, and I should definitely be checking it out. And speaking of dark, No Longer Human, back in print. This is the complete edition. Now, something you're going to notice right away is the format. This is printed in the left to right format. Oh, these are the covers of the three volumes, yeah. 
So these were originally published here in America. Oh my gosh. And they went out of, I believe it was Vertical. Vertical is the one that printed these. Um, there were three volumes and yes, all completely out of print. Volume three, holy crap. Like it went for a lot of money. It It's insane. When some of these books go out of print, it gets crazy how much people are willing to pay for them. Um, but now it's back in print in this one complete edition for $29.95. It is soft cover, but it is a huge book. And let's see back here. It says just a little bit about the translations, the work of fiction. And this is, yeah, definitely trigger warning for this one. You know, self-harm and things like that. Uh, but it is a dark story. It's deep and beautiful, but really dark if you've not read it. Seems like the only color pages are the ones printed here on glossy paper, and it's just the covers of the original three Tonka Bonds. Now, I have done an overview of the Ghost in the Shell fully compiled hardcover edition and compared it to the box set and the previous releases. If you want to go back and watch that video, I'll leave the link above so you can click on that but in case you're curious if you want a more thorough overview of this particular book. Finally, after years of looking for the right price, not really looking for the books, because I found the books often, especially like half price books and places like that, and they still wanted way too much money for this stuff. So this is Lady Snowblood. It was brought over to America by Dark Horse Comics, and it had a very small print run. Uh, this is Kazue Koike, who is, of course, the gentleman that gave a Samurai Executioner, and the masterpiece that is Lone Wolf and Cub. But it's also by Kasui Kamimura. So let's just take a closer look in here. And this is all a revenge story. It's a young girl's family who is all destroyed. So she's out to get revenge. It's just one of his particular stories. They've actually made a movie about this. My wife and I watched it a few years back. And that's kind of what brought this to my attention again. I was thinking, oh... I actually don't have that manga and I've always wanted it. And it's one of those books that I don't know if Dark Horse has any interest in bringing back. I believe they still do hold the rights to reprinting these. Maybe in some nice hardcovers, right? Two hardcovers for these. If they first give us the Lone Wolf and Cub. But saying you want something in hardcover is a lot easier said than done. As I've come to learn from working with different publishers. Like just because... We want it in America in a nice hardcover like the Deluxe Edition of Berserk, for example. That still has to get approved by the license holder in Japan. And sometimes that's a little trickier to get them to just allow that to happen. Sometimes there's a lot of hurdles to go through. Sometimes it's more money. But this is Lady Snowblood. Parental advisory for sure. And I finally got my hands on I found it in a... You know, what was it? A Facebook group. Somebody was selling all four of them. They're not in mint condition, but I don't care. For me, it's about reading these books. I don't have to have them in mint condition. Near mint! Near mint works. And finally, I get to talk to all the cool kids, or at least the kids that have read Attack on Titan, about the finale of Attack on Titan. I hadn't read it. I was waiting for the Colossal Editions to come out. And I honestly stopped with Volume 4. I hadn't picked up any because I was waiting for the series to finish. Just showcasing the artwork in here. I wanted to just read them all at, in one sitting. Because uh, I just wanted to see how it ended. I'm tired of waiting to see what's in the basement. I haven't even seen the final, what is it, final season parts 1, 2, and 3. Brilliant marketing, by the way. Final seasons part 1, 2, and 3. Way to go. Uh, but this is the final volume right here, actually, volume 7. This is it. So I don't want to flip too much through here, but the artwork, of course, looking a little bit different than, or a lot bit different than the anime, if you're used to that particular art style. And, yeah, this wraps up the series. Now, these are big, because they're called Colossal Oversize. I wish they were, of course, in hardcover format, but, hey, I'll take what I can get. These are $44.99. Actually, no, some of these are... $49.99, the bigger ones, the thicker ones. So the last one, it's a little slimmer. Now, these are bigger than your Tonka Bonds. So here, for example, is a Tonka Bond size. So they, yeah, they are a lot bigger. And let me actually, let's go back to volume five because I wanted to show that not just the internal artwork, but the covers are all in black and white. 
So the covers, what they do, is very similar to what they do in Berserk and Blade of the Immortal. Uh, deluxe editions is they keep the covers in the back and the covers are in black and white i wish they had been in color but hey what are you gonna do i mean you have five books in one of these big editions and i you know i think they're nice enough to read and i'm sure my dumb ass if ever there comes a hardcover collection of these in with color pages i will double dip because i have been enjoying the manga all right, let's get to some box sets, and something you can probably see already is just the big difference in the box sets. Even though they're the same publisher at times, like, just how much bigger some of them are, and, and some of these are the same price, which is just crazy, uh, how much taller some of them are, like, well, that's a Kadansha book right there, and, yeah, so, I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason for the sizes of these sometimes, like, that right there, that's bigger than all of these oh, here we go so yeah we're uh we'll look at a couple of these really quick and then we'll look at the gallery edition art book let's go ahead and start with the quintessential quintuplets though all right so here we have the second box set of the quintessential quintuplets and i'll be honest with you this was not even in my radar until i think it was an amazon here let's take a look at what one of these looks like uh, there was an Amazon glitch with the first box set and the first box set was Ridiculously reduced to like 20 something bucks So I thought yeah, let's try it out. I didn't know there was gonna be a part two uh, This one's a little bit more. I think this one was 40 something dollars for the box set uh, Oh man, I'm putting that in the wrong order, but there's a total of 14 of these now of course which means that I need to get to reading these now, much like the first box set, this one does come with some pull-out posters. So, these are... I think they're double-sided. Yeah. So... Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's pretty cool, but... Do I see myself hanging this stuff up? It's cute. And I don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll hang it up. And, yes, there's two posters in here. So, a total of four images... And I'm totally holding that upside down. Get a better idea. There we are. There. All right. Let's continue. Oh, and before we do, one thing I noticed is that the top of this has the rest of the words. Essential tuplets. But I can't imagine very many people shelving their books or their box sets like this so that you can read what it is. I mean, you have to read it from the top. But anyway, I did notice that. There is art on all three sides, and then, of course, the ISBN down there. Uh, this one right here is rated older teen and retails for $76.96. It's an interesting price point. Rent a Girlfriend, manga box set one, which I assume that means box set two. Uh, this actually was because of my buddy Geo. My buddy Geo, manga um, enthusiast that he is, he has his own channel called Manga Geekdom. And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go check it out if you're a huge fan of manga. Uh, he was telling me about it and then just sold me on the premise. And I was like, hey, there's a box set coming out next year, which was last year when I got this. But I decided to go ahead and purchase it. But he said it's not finished. I think there's enough for another box set. This one, like the rest of these box sets, or some of them, comes with little posters as well. Now, this one isn't as big as the quintessential quintuplets they're smaller posters like this but they're two-sided posters and i assume when the second box set comes out they'll also have two-sided posters like this fan service my gosh i guess that never goes away the sixth and final box set from fairy tale is finally in my hands it's been in my hands for a while i just haven't done a video <laughs> so but here it is hidomashima's Fairy Tale, volumes 54 to 63, all in one box set, and it's very similar to the box sets uh, that have come previously, and this one comes with sticker sheets right there, or just one sticker sheet, rather. So, this is what I mean by, like, some of these, you know, they're holding, like, six volumes, and some of them are holding uh, f uh, seven volumes, but, I, so I don't know what determines what how many volumes these hold in there but this one for example has a total of 10 volumes in it 
which I believe for the most part the rest of the box sets have. This is volume 58 right here, so not flipping too much through here. I don't know if his new series is going to get a box set, but I think we're just still on like volume 6 or 7 of that series, Eden Zero. So maybe when it's all said and done. But I do like the idea. I kind of like the mentality that I have here. Let's go ahead. With Omnis is that I I can wait on an omnibus instead of getting trade paperbacks. And I can wait on box sets instead of getting the individual volumes of the Tonkabon. And of course, without buying the individual volumes, there wouldn't be the box set, right? Because that's how they determine whether something is popular enough to get a box set or not. This is the time I got reincarnated as a slime. This is box set. I believe this is box set two, if I'm not mistaken. Box set one. Season one, part two, sorry. So I assume there's a season two, part one coming out sometime. But yeah, without the sales of the individual Tonka Bonds, the publishers would not know that there's an interest in these series to be released in a box set. So much like the Omnis, that's how Marvel and DC determine whether they release box sets of certain series, or box sets, I'm sorry, uh, Omnis of certain series, is if that there's enough demand for it, that the sales are good and trade paperback. That's what got us a... For example, Black Cat Omnibus. And this right here is a color gallery illustration book. Oh, nice. See, I like extras like this more than posters because I never see myself hanging a poster up. But I do look at this stuff right here. And the artwork is just gorgeous. This is a series that was introduced to me by my buddy TikTok Tina, who's in charge of our TikTok now. And she, I think we watched the first few episodes together. And I was like, oh, I'll just read it because I know that Kodansha's putting out the manga. But this is the box set. And again, right, it's really weird, right? This one only collects five volumes. And the price on this one here is $64.95. So $64.95, I feel like uh, maybe one more volume. So the price, so for example, this one here only collects five volumes. And the price on this one is $64.95. I think six is the sweet spot. Six volumes, that's the sweet spot. But then again, maybe season one ended with volume 11. Watakoi, Love is Hard for uh, Otaku, the complete series manga box set. Uh, this is one that TikTok Tina and I did an actual TikTok on. And it's about an otaku, a boot, about an otaku. Let me see what's in here. I believe... This one here is one of the few that actually has something really unique down here. It's like a... Oh, it's just a little uh, notepad. Or notes. Got squished by the uh, books, I assume. Or this little part right here. Interesting. That, okay, that's not a poster. It's not a illustration guide. Sure, I'll... I'll take that. But this is Wotakoi. Love is hard for an otaku. does have some color pages in here. These are big, thick books. And the color pages, even the ones in the middle here, are printed in glossy paper stock. Whereas the rest has a matte paper finish to it. And there is a total of six of these. With the volume six being the slimmest one compared to the other volumes like that. Yeah, this one is one that I bought because it was a box set, going in completely blind. I had to take the little sticky note pad and turn it upside down, just so I didn't wrinkle up the paper in there. But that is Wotakoi. And then continuing my journey with Seven Deadly Sins is box set volume four. However, I don't have box set volume three, so this is what happens sometimes. I saw that this one was out and i was like oh let's go ahead and get that yeah i for some reason didn't have volume th or box set three so can't read any of these yet i'll have to wait until i get box set three to read these so this is all in chronological order i love the fact this really reminds me of those dragon ball z days the images or the image right there across the spines even if you don't have the box set I think that's awesome. I just get the box set because sometimes it's cheaper. Um, unless you buy them used, of course. Now, this one does come with posters, I believe. Is it a wanted poster on one side? Yeah, so you have a wanted poster of the characters. Gother, right there. 
just like the previous ones. And then the seven deadly sins right there. Wow. It's beautiful. Really dig the artwork in this one. Like it, it surprised me how much I dug the art. Because I saw the my daughters and I watched the anime. Or the one that was on Netflix. I think it was just the first season. So I wanted to see how the rest of the story continued. And see if my kiddos are interested in following the manga. The last box set we're looking at is the Sweat and Soap box set. It does say part one. This is by Kintetsu Yamada. So I assume there's going to be a second box set unless the series is continuing. Boy, that doesn't look <laughs> like she's um, enjoying that. But wait, I don't know what this is. I, this is another one that I'm going completely blind in. And I just saw some booty. So what is this rated? Let's find out. This is rated Older Teen, also published by Kadansha. And this one has six volumes. So yeah, I'm okay with six volumes. It's the five volumes that I was thinking, ah, I don't think that's enough. Uh, let's see what this one has. This one has a, is that a poster? No, there's stickers. Okay. There's sticker sheets. And there's just two sticker sheets in this one. Let's look at another volume really quick. Doesn't look like, at least from the couple volumes that I pulled out, that this has any color pages in it. I'm surprised that this one is older teen just by flipping through here some of the things that I saw. And then other books. That's one that I hope they collect in some just box set or something. It looks beautiful, just based on the covers, Beyond the Clouds. Let me know if you're reading that. Hey, Sayuki, I think I've got those all. The, the heart covers. St. Youngman. Oh, sweet. My daughter loves the Cheese Sweet Home. And this is kind of a spinoff series from that. This is Sue and Tai Chan. Clover. And then, of course, Magic Night Ray Earth, which is one of my favorite box sets. Why am I looking at the ads? All right. Let's take a look at the final book of this haul. And that is the Lone Wolf and Cub Gallery Edition by Kazue Koike and Gozeki Kojima. Oh, my gosh. Uh, published by Dark Horse Comics. This is a beautiful, beautiful gallery edition. And what this really is, though, it feels like a artist edition book. Like original pages. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Now, we've seen gallery editions before. Uh, D Dark Horse has published them. Marvel has published them. But, yeah, this looks like the original pages right here with the finished artwork right here. And, of course, when you're looking at the finished pages or i'm sorry the finished pages over here to the left it's mirrored because that's the way they translated them back then so those books are done in the left to right format like the western style comics and it was just the way they were bringing comics over from japan no matter what the book was oh my gosh that is so freaking awesome i'm so glad they have the translation here too uh they do tell you like where the chapters are from like this is from chapter 110 heaven and earth I'm just making sure nothing is spoiled here. This is from chapter 124. Because we're looking at the later chapters of these stories. And I hate to spoil this for anybody. Oh man. This just brings back so many memories. And this is the way that I wish that Dark Horse would release these in a big oversized format. Not this big, right? I'm, I'm, the deluxe edition of Berserk and Blade of the Immortal and Helsing are perfect. That's the size that... Lone Wolf and Cub needs to be in. And really, you would be looking at about nine volumes, which, hey, you know, less than Blade of the Immortal and less than Berserk. But yes, you have the original Japanese art right there, and then the way it was translated to America. Of course, there's no translation there because there's no words. Here we go. Something like this. So, yes, it is interesting that you still read it in the traditional left-to-right format whenever you're reading this, because... Just because the, it, the art is mirrored and the book has been translated doesn't mean that you read it from right to left. And I think that's always a problem with some of the people that have uh, gotten some of these older books. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, we'll stop at that one. Let's go back. Just trying to see if they had any more of those watercolor images. That is so freaking beautiful. Which means that the opposite page will have the... Yeah, man. We'll look at a couple of more pages. So both... Koike and Kojima, they were both known as the golden duo. Like, whenever they worked together on projects, people would just expect that this level of quality, which we did get. Uh, I think Kojima, he passed away in 2000. And, 
oh koi kid we just lost him and right before i think it was right before the pandemic it's like 2019 two masters gone man they were just some phenomenal creators uh so this is a hardcover and this one retails for a hundred and nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents and that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my haul for the month of April of 2023. I think, yeah, it's been about a year. Well, I know it was in 2022 the last time I did a manga haul. So this is what I picked up recently, and I'll be doing another one. Don't forget to come back to the channel. Make sure you're subscribed for the manga tour. That should be coming out sometime in May. But that's it for me. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you want to see some overviews of books, leave the suggestions down below in the comment section. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.